Welcome back, Cannonites, for a very special cannon fodder. This week we have some exciting content, so let's dive in. We open with a formal announcement for Halo Fractures, essentially Halo Evolutions 2. Indeed, this will be a collection of short stories from authors new and old to the Halo universe, and as an exciting bonus, will include Shadow of Intent and Saint's Testimony. Before we look at who's contributing, let's take a look at the back of book description. Launch once more into galaxy-spanning conflict and legendary heroism. Shards of an ever-expanding journey where human and alien alike find their finest hours in facing their greatest challenges. These scattered stories span untold millennia, from the age of the ancient custodial race known as the Forerunners, to the aftermath of the Covenant's bloody war against humanity, and even the shocking events surrounding the resurrection of the mysterious Guardians. Halo Fractures explores mythic tales of bravery and sacrifice that blaze brightly at the very heart of the Halo universe. So, that sounds pretty damn exciting. More Forerunner action, post-war action, and seemingly post-Halo 5 action. If nothing else, the idea of learning about the Guardians has me hooked. I'm sadly reminded that such information would have been better served last year, but I'm glad it's finally happening nonetheless. And hopefully, though I'm not holding my breath on this, some information on the Warden will be included too. Now if that wasn't enough, Grimm teases us with some of the content we can look forward to, specifically mentioning ferrets, referencing the ferret team comprised of Team Saber and Veta Lopez, Tales Beyond Rebirth, the epilogue from Halo Silentium that ended with the reseeding of the galaxy and the Forerunners departing on their great journey, Spartans that have had their worlds turned inside out, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I'm hoping that maybe we might get some info on Naomi 010, and Warrior Servants Looking for Greater Purpose. That's a lot of potential ground to cover, on top of everything already mentioned in the back of book text, and it only gets better as we see the author list. Tobias Buckle, known for Halo Cole Protocol and the short story Dirt, Troy Denning, author of Halo Last Light, Matt Forbeck, author of Halo New Blood and confirmed ODST fanatic, Kelly Gay, a relatively new author whose works touch sci-fi, sci-fantasy, and urban fantasy of genre I personally love. Christy Golden, a long-established author who has written books for StarCraft, Star Trek, Star Wars, and World of Warcraft, along with her own works. Kevin Grace, who wrote The Return, a story I recall many fans absolutely loving. Morgan Lockhart, 343's narrative designer since Halo 4. John Jackson Miller, who has written books for Star Trek, Star Wars, and has done excellent work with the Mass Effect comics in the past. Frank O'Connor, whose work I think we're fairly familiar with. Brian Reed, former comic writer and 343's narrative director and James Swallow, who has written books for Warhammer 40k, Star Trek, Doctor Who, Stargate, wrote for the Deus Ex Human Revolutions video game, and so much more. In short, the book is packed with talent, and even if you're skeptical about one or two of the authors, there's plenty more for you to enjoy. The book will drop on September 20th this year, and you can bet I'll be picking up a copy day one. We're off to a good start today, so let's keep going. As you may or may not know, this summer we'll see the release of Halo Ground Command, while starter sets are up for pre-order, we now also have the UNSC Pelican and Covenant Phantom. As you can see in this image, these sets are massive, measuring 13 to 14 inches or 33 to 35.6 centimeters in length. These are collector's pieces, if nothing else. After that, Grimm informs us of the Ultimate Arbiter pack for Killer Instinct. If the only thing you care for about that game is the Halo crossover content, this is the pack for you. It's $9.99 on the Xbox Store. Speaking of announcements, the Halo Library Edition Volume 1 is out and contains Halo Initiation Issues 1-3, through 3, Halo Escalation Issues 1-12, through 12, and some extra content, a gallery and some behind-the-scenes commentary. When my finances recover from pre-ordering Ground Command, I may have to pick this one up. Next up is a quick correction for some Halo fan sites, in a manner of speaking. You see, the recent update to Halo 5, along with including the classic Brute Plasma Rifle, included a couple variants. One of these was called the Scale of Soyrapt, named after one of Doisak, the Brute Ho World's, moons. A few community sites had this satellite listed as Soulrapt, causing some confusion. However, Soyrapt is the correct spelling. Not necessarily the correct pronunciation. And we close with a surprise mention of my History of Johnson video. Wow! <laughs> Holy hell, thanks Grim. I'm seriously at a loss for words, thank you. Calming down, we arrive at this week's Universe Articles. With last week giving us insights on Emil and George, it's only fitting that this week finishes, for the most part, Noble Team with Carter A259, Cat B320, and June A266. Starting with Carter, the future leader of Noble Team was born on August 27th, 2520, in Durban on the colony of Biko. Damn, I just realized that the guy turned 32 three days before his death. 
Damn. Anyway, Carter's homeworld was glassed in 2526, and in 2531, he was taken by Oni for the Spartan III program. Carter was a little unique in that he was a bit older than many of his fellow recruits. Most were between the ages of 4 and 7, while Carter was 11. Though he quickly demonstrated exceptional leadership and capability, Carter and candidates like him were deemed too important for suicidal operations and were transferred to Unicom Operation Control in an arrangement meant to secure Army support for the Spartan III program within high command. According to Dr. Halsey, Carter's leadership made Noble Team into more than just a collection of Spartans. He led Noble for years, with him and Cat eventually being all that remained of the original team, which would seem to imply that Noble didn't form until after Beta Company graduated. Carter was given quite a bit of leeway when it came to selecting replacements for his team, so much so that it was a surprise when Colonel Holland selected Spartan B-312 to replace Tom A-293 on Noble Team. On July 24, 2552, Noble was deployed to the Visegrad Relay on Reach to investigate suspected insurrectionist activity. Instead, they found the Covenant, and a month-long fight for survival began. On August 30th, Carter sacrificed himself so Noble 6 and Emil A-239 could complete their final mission deliver a fragment of Cortana to the UNSC Pillar of Autumn. Next up is Cat B320, the other original member of Noble Team. She was born on January 30th, 2530 in Monastir, one of the three jewel cities on the colony of New Harmony. Her father died in combat and her mother, strangely, died of cancer in 2536, which, according to Midnight at the Heart of Midlothian, isn't a very big deal in the 26th century. Cancer is kind of, um, slow burn, localized infection, kind of. But we haven't really seen a lot of it since, hmm, 22nd century, according to this. Anyway, it's easy to treat, but you're gonna have to have surgery. Woof. Anyway, Kat was then raised by her grandmother, a retired army general, making her abduction for the Spartan III program too conspicuous. However, the grandmother died during the fall of New Harmony and Cat was subsequently conscripted into Beta Company. Her brilliance, athleticism, and loyalty to the UNSC caught attention early on and she was marked for special assignments shortly after her augmentations. Within Noble Team, she excelled at battle net management, tactical planning, and intelligence synthesis. In April of 2552, during the battle for the colony of Fumirol, Cat was hit by a banshee bomb which resulted in the loss of her right arm. Her mission, getting a Fury tactical nuke onto a CCS-class battlecruiser to destroy it, was completed by teammate Tom A293 at the cost of his own life. This event would weigh on Kat's conscience for the rest of her days. On August 23rd, as she and Noble were making their way to a fallout shelter while New Alexandria was being glassed, Kat was killed by a Sangheili marksman. Her death would weigh hardest on Carter. Finally, we close with the only surviving member of Noble Team, the sniper, June A266. June was also from New Harmony, born on February 28, 2524, in Tiamen. After being inducted into the Spartan III program, he grew to be an expert marksman and scout, though his augmentations nearly crippled him. I personally find this particularly interesting, as the Spartan III augmentations were said to have a 100% survival rate. Now naturally this doesn't break canon, but it's the first we've heard of complications related to the augmentation process, though it would make sense that, if it were to happen at all, it would happen with Alpha Company, as they were the first. Anyway, his skills as a sniper quickly made June a top asset for the program and resulted in him leading a headhunter team under Oni directly. Little is known of this time, though it is suspected that June tracked and killed a number of insurrectionist leaders that broke the tentative ceasefire between the UNSC and rebel groups after the attack on Harvest. His performance eventually led to his placement on Noble Team. In the early hours of August 30th, after almost a month of fighting the Covenant on Reach, what remained of Noble was tasked with delivering a fragment of Cortana to the Pillar of Autumn. June, however, was directed to escort Dr. Halsey to Castle Base. He succeeded, though the two were separated soon after for reasons unknown. June eventually did escape the planet, after which he worked as a recruiter for the Spartan IV program under Admiral Musa 096. June always took his duties with a deadly seriousness, uncompromising in his review process. Despite this, some that he had personally recruited would fail during the training process or go rogue. Though he would appear unconcerned to outsiders, Musa knew that June saw these as proof of the Spartan branch's success. These individuals chose their path, a luxury not afforded to previous Spartan classes. Boy, that was a lot! Like I said last week with the entries on Emil and George, playing Reach is going to be a very different experience after this. While Bungie did put out profiles for each member of Noble Team prior to Reach's launch, stuff like this would have certainly endeared the characters to more fans back then. While many today remember Reach and Noble Team fondly, 
there are those of us who remember the criticism, the hate. Well, that wraps up the main article. Before we go, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Covenant Cannon. You may remember a while back we talked about their Facebook page, but now they've officially transferred to YouTube. They have two videos up so far, one an overview of the Covenant Empire and the other on Covenant politics. Check them out and show a fellow Halo fan some love. By the way, the guy's a huge Sangheili fan, so any of you fellow Sangheili lovers may want to keep an eye on his channel. One last announcement. I'll be out of town starting this next Thursday, so the next Cannon Fodder video probably won't be up until the following Monday. I have a couple of videos planned to hold you guys over until I get back into town, but I wanted to let everyone know about this in case there were questions. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.